What's going on, y'all? This is me, your boy, Scott, about Nature TV, and we're here for a brand new review of Basketball Wise Season 10, Episode 2. Listen, you guys, I was waiting for the rain to pass, and I had literally got out of my clothes and got in the bed, but then the rain stopped, so I got to do this video. Child, listen, I am tired, okay? I got a trip coming up this um weekend, so this is why I've been very slow on the content, because I'm really trying to get my rest in. I know y'all have been on my ass um for the last few weeks. I've been complaining about being tired and everything else. So, you know, I haven't really done that many videos this week. Um, but, yeah, at least y'all, I, I do enough to make sure y'all get at least one video a day for the last few. Um, for the last week, y'all have gotten at least one video a day. Um, so, y'all not starving. You know what I'm saying? So, at least you got one video. Um, I have still haven't watched Love and Marriage CC. Uh, listen, y'all, I'm going to try to watch it, okay? That's another review that y'all um, probably waiting on. And I still plan on having um, my reviews for Chasing Atlanta episodes 5 through 8 out by Thursday. No, by tomorrow, actually. Because, um, you know, um, the show returns um, tomorrow. So I plan to have my two Chasing Atlanta reviews out by um, tomorrow morning. And then um, whatever's going on in the news, you know, I'm going to try to check up on it, you know, a little bit after... Um, the panel is over because you know the panel is tonight and it will be on really B T V channel. So if y'all if you guys have not um gotten the link, the link is on my community wall right now and it's also on my Instagram story. So I'll go on over there to my community wall and click on that video and set your reminders and also subscribe because like I said, this is a rotating panel, okay? And we are talking about Real Housewives of Atlanta as well as this show that I'm reviewing right now, okay? So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into the review, okay? So we're here to talk about basketball wives. So we're going to start this thing off with what we picked up at last week with Brandy versus Malaysia, okay? Now, Malaysia says that she didn't know. That's what she said. She said she didn't know. Brandy keeps on reiterating that they have the same mutual friend. Malaysia said that they don't, which turns out to be a lie towards the middle of the episode. But I'm going to wait until we get to that part so I can call my ass out on it. But it, to me, it just seems as though... It's a situation where you love somebody, but they just don't love you the same way. And I feel like Brandy really misses the relationship. But I think that Brandy's approach is all wrong. I think that the, the way that they're both approaching it is wrong. You got Brandy with her aggressive nature. And then you got Malaysia with her being very dismissive to Brandy and her feelings. So I think that they're both handling the situation um wrong like malaysia shouldn't be dismissive and brandy should not be um abrasive and aggressive and just completely too much because that's what she's doing and it's like a lot of us understand where she's coming from but the but the but the point gets lost in the sauce when she acts up the way that she does sometimes that's my whole point when it comes down to brandy i feel i feel like she can fuck up what she's trying to do when she starts acting a fool. And I don't think she needs to do that because when she does that, then she fucks it up. So um, at the end of the day, if Malaysia did not know, then she really just didn't know, honestly. But like I said, it's a it's a 50-50 thing for me. Um, I feel like there's a possibility that she knew. I still feel like that. And then there's a possibility that she really did not know. But like I said, even I knew Brandy Daddy died. I mean, shit, the shit was on social media. Even I knew that he died. And I was surprised when Malaysia didn't say nothing about it back then. And you know, all this shit was filmed over a year ago. Because you know, Basketball Wise has been filming since um Jurassic Park. So, you know, it is what it is. But I just, you know, it's, it sucks to see that. Malaysia asked Jennifer, um, you know, wait, 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 wait. Brandy said, there's just some things about each other that we don't like and we just need to keep it moving. In so many words, Malaysia really don't care to salvage this relationship, but Brandy cares enough to do so. And I think that's really what a disconnect is. Malaysia don't give a fuck. Honestly, she don't. And I think that that's sad that she don't. It's like, you're trying to show a person that you really, really love them, but they shitting on you by giving you their ass to kiss. And that's exactly what Malaysia doing. She giving her her ass to kiss, basically saying, bitch, I don't need you. I don't want to be your damn friend. It is what it is. And please don't get me wrong. This is not me saying that Malaysia got to be her friend. But God damn, show just a little bit of compassion. The girl just lost her daddy last month. And yeah, I know that Brandy doing too much. I know. But, you know, it is what it is. Um... <clears throat> but it is what it is. So, you know, but Jennifer asked Malaysia, are you okay? Malaysia said, yeah, I'm fine. 
And then Jennifer was like, well, you don't miss Brandy? And then she was like, no, I don't miss Brandy. And then Jennifer said, you don't miss her? And she was like, no, I don't. I feel like that's a cop out and I think that's a defense a defense mechanism. I definitely think that Malaysia misses Brandy, but she's not going to show it. She loves that girl. So she's not going to show it. That's the Leo in her. She's going to deny that she misses her. But in our reality, that girl misses her. And that's just really what it is. She missed that girl. Then Brandy breaks down to Brooke. And she's, you know, basically saying that she loves Malaysia. And she would really like to fix their relationship. But it's like she don't give a fuck. And to be honest, Brandy, she don't. Malaysia don't give a fuck. And you know what? I've been in Brandy's shoes. And this is why I'm not going so hard on Brandy like that. Just for the simple fact that I've been in that predicament where it's like, you know, somebody cut me. And we don't really know the basis of why they are no longer friends. We really don't know. But it's like this. I feel like. Um, the problem is that, because I know what happened to me, somebody cut me off for no reason. And until this day, I have no idea why they cut me off. And people were different people, different friends of ours were telling me this and telling me that. And I didn't want to believe them because I always, we always had this pact that if there were, if there was ever an issue between us, pick up the phone and call me or come by the house. You know, we ain't going to do that text and shit. Pick up the phone and call me. Or better yet, let's um let's meet up. Let's go to the park and talk. Let's do this. Let's do that. Like give me a re like give me the the chance to have a conversation. You know what I'm saying? And he did not give me that chance, and it hurt me. It really really hurt me. You know what I'm saying? Like it hurt me. It felt like a divorce. It felt like um, a relationship that I that I that I love because one thing about it that that person was a friend that I absolutely absolutely adored. Like I loved him. Like for real. I love that boy. Anytime you see it's like we had so many things in common and we knew how to handle each other. We were both Aquarius. His birthday was February the eighth. Mine was February the twelfth. Um we both loved music. Oh my God, we had so many similarities. He would disappear when he was going through things and by me having the same personality as him, I understood him while others did not. And I waited in the wings until he got better and he, eventually he, he comes back. That's how it was. So when he just up and stopped talking to me, that did something to me and it hurt me. And, you know, I was trying to talk to him and see what was going on. He kept saying that, oh, no, 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 no. There's nothing going on. You know, we're good. There's nothing going on. There's nothing going on. Absolutely nothing. But it was obviously something going on there. You know what I mean? Like it was obviously something going on. And, you know, I just I just felt like um, he was lying because I didn't think that the people that, that was telling me that was a problem was would have a reason to lie on him. Like, you know, like, well, what the fuck is he lying? What the fuck would they be lying on him for? You know what I mean? Like he ain't nobody to be lying on. You know what I'm saying? So I was hurt by that. I felt it just like Brandy. Like I was hurt. Like, I cried tears over that man, like, because we did a lot of stuff together. Like, anytime you saw me, you saw him. Anytime you saw him, you saw me. Like, we was always together to the point to where people thought that we were in a relationship. Like, I remember one time we went to the to a wedding, and we both wore the same color. And people just, that just put everybody on blast. Like, oh, now I know they fucking now. Like, we was just that close. We even kissed before. Like, like, that's how close we are. You know what I mean? Like, that's how close we are. Like, we have had, um, we had a great bond, like a deep ass bond that nobody would ever understand. So when he stopped dealing with me, it was, it was hurtful. And, you know, when people were telling me that he wasn't dealing with me, it was hurtful even more because why are they telling me? Why you're not telling me? Then when I confronted him, he denied it, but he kept moving like he wasn't fucking with me. And that was that and that was bothersome. And one time he called me and he said, you know, everything is good over here. Like I had to go through some therapy, you know, because he lost his mom and stuff. So he had relationship issues. Like he had a lot of stuff going on around the time his mama died. And he kind of distanced himself from everybody. And he was like, I'm gonna come back around you and the guys are gonna have us a great time. It's gonna be like old times. And I was so excited, but then it was my birthday. And I invited him to my birthday celebration and he didn't come. And then the very next year, 
I told him happy birthday. He he thanked me. He said he loved me. Then he told me happy birthday. And then it was like, okay. And then after a while, I felt like I was kissing his ass and I just stopped texting. Because it felt like I was begging him. You know what I mean? Like, that's what it felt like. It felt like I was begging him for some attention. And you know what I mean? Like, that's that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? So, I was I was floored when he stopped talking to me. Very floored. And I was like, oh my God. Hold on. Because my, my real best friend just sent me something. Wait a minute. <laughs> But yeah, it was hurtful. And after a while, I grew not to fuck, you know, like I didn't care anymore. And I remember the first time I saw him, I had not seen him. The first time I saw him was 2019. I had not talked to him since 2016, but I hadn't seen his face since 2014. So it had been five years since I seen him. When we finally saw each other, I felt like Brandy. I wept on the inside just because of the fact that we used to be best friends and now we acting like we don't know each other. And now that's the energy that I give now. So... I think Brandy will eventually get to that point because when you love somebody, really, really love them, it's hard to really break away from them. And I had to learn it the hard way. And once I really, really learned it, I let it go. And that's what she got to do. So Brooke and Brandy, they meet up. Brooke is about to get her some, um, get her nipples pierced or whatever. And Brandy is like, oh my God, like, why are you getting your nipples pierced, girl? You get that type of stuff. And you know, looking at Brooke. She looked like she into, into that type of shit. So um, Brooke gives condolences to Brandy. And Brooke was just trying to be, you know, there for Brandy because she saw the hurt that she endured with that conversation with Malaysia. And she just feels like, you know, she just lost her father. And she needs people around her that's really going to support her right about now. You know what I'm saying? So that's where she's at with it. And, you know, Brandy is very appreciative of Brooke and her generosity. You know, Brooke is having a birthday party, and she said that she's going to invite everybody, including Malaysia. You know, Brandy was like, you know, well, okay. You know, of course she's going to invite everybody. You know what I'm saying? So that's pretty much the gist of that entire scene. So we get into that, um, this scene with Angel, Rockstar, Duffy, and her boyfriend, Iman. There's awkwardness in the in the room. Like, it's, it's awkwardness as they're eating their food. It's very much so awkward. Like, Duffy and Iman, they switching food. They switching plates out. That's something that they do. But you could tell on the other side of the table that Angel and Rock are having some issues right about now. So it's awkward. And now they put their issues out on the table. And that's one thing that I don't agree with. Like, I, like that was like Candy and Todd um, this past Sunday. Like, y'all putting y'all issues out there so everybody can have something to say about it. Like, don't put your issues out on the table like that, child. Don't put your issues out on the table like that, honey. It's, I just feel like that's really not the right thing to do. Don't put your issues out there in front of people because then that gives people, you know, some opinions about certain things. You know what I mean? Um, <coughs> which is how I felt about, you know, some situations that happened um, this past weekend with, you know, with two people that y'all, some of y'all might be familiar with. I didn't like the fact that stuff was going on in front of everybody because now everybody got a goddamn opinion. But it looks to me like Rockstar don't deserve Angel. He don't deserve her. I don't even know why the hell Angel even with this corny ass nigga. Like the I thought he was one of I thought he was like he was a sugar cube. Like me, Terrence, and Josiah. That's what I thought he was giving. I thought he was giving sugar cube. Okay. That's what I thought that he was a giving. Okay. That's what I thought he was giving, honey. That's what I thought he was giving. But apparently, um, he likes cooch. And it's just that him and Angel are just having issues. And 
I think that it's the worst time to really be having issues when you're pregnant and you're about to have a baby child. You know what I mean? Like, that's pretty much where we're at with it. And, you know, Duffy is very uncomfortable. But, you know, what was really crazy is that Duffy and Angel are having all of these bonding moments. But the last time we saw them together, they didn't even get along. Like, Duffy was a lightweight bully to Angel, weak ass. So, you know, it's just like, okay, when y'all become so damn cool, child? When y'all become so fucking cool? That's the part I'm trying to understand here. But okay, girl, you know, maybe they talked it over over the years. You know, you never know. You never know. Sometimes people can talk outside of the cameras. You know what I mean? That can happen sometimes. So that could that could be the issue here. Like they probably talk, you know what I mean? Like they probably got some things going on. You know what I mean? They probably had a conversation and shit like that. You know what I mean? So that's what I think happened. Um, so DJ and Amon, they discussed Duffy. Um, you know, now Duffy has been DJing again for the last couple of years, and Duffy wants, um, uh, I mean, Iman wants Duffy to be at home and being a full-time mom and just, you know, being around him all the time. But I think that that's unfair to Duffy, honestly. I think that's unfair to her for you to try to give her this thing where you need to figure out what you want to do. Let her DJ. Why is it that these men always want these women to live these 1950s lifestyles and shit like that? Um... And all that other shit. That's how I feel, baby. Like for real, for real. Like that is how I feel, honey. Like I just, I just, I just feel as though, like, why, why she gotta stop what she doing to make you happy? Why is it that men want women to just sit at home and sit up in their dusters and you know wash dishes and cook their meals all the time, but not have nothing for themselves? Because I think that puts women in the trick bag. You know what I mean? Like they sit down, they be the doting wife and mother. And then when the shit don't work out, they be broke as hell on, on the block. And then they not going to help them. Look at Janeiro in Malaysia. So it's just crazy to me. Hold on, y'all. Okay. But yeah, it's um. Oh my god, I can never. Anyway, so <clears throat> so yeah, it's just like oh my god, like you know, it's crazy. So he wants her to give up DJ. I don't think I really feel like Duffy shouldn't give up shit. I feel like she shouldn't give it up. If that's what she loves to do, let her do that. Um, so it's Zell Swag who's gonna find any way to get on anybody's reality show. Zell Swag walks into the building and um, you know, him and Malaysia are friends, and Malaysia said he's good friends with Duffy and he's good friends with Brandy as well. But I thought you said that y'all didn't have no mutual friends, and you just set your lying ass up here and said that Zell was a friend of Brandy's and Duffy's as well. So what the fuck are you talking about? Malaysia's a lie. That lets me know right there that she fucking knew. She knew, she knew, she knew. She knew, period. She knew, okay? She fucking knew. Like, it is what it is. She she knew. She knew. She fucking knew. She knew. And it is what it is. That's how I feel. Because if, if they're friends with both Brandy and Duffy, Malaysia had to find out. But she says that, you know, um, she was bent about her relationship with Brandy. You know, Zell was like, at the end of the day, you and Brandy are going to two different roles. You a single parent. You know, Brandy is married. You know, you got a lot of stuff going on. And then Malaysia breaks down. She was like, I'm going through things. I'm going through things. And nobody, nobody calls me. Nobody tries to check on me. Just leave me the fuck alone. Here's my thing, though. It just feels like history is repeating itself. Because... You came for Drea about the same damn thing that Brandy came for you about. So it was like the same thing you were saying about Drea. You doing it to Brandy. But I guess the only difference is you and Brandy have not been friends in three years. And I think that's where the disconnect comes in at. <coughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that's where the disconnect comes in at. You know, because y'all ain't been friends in a while. So that's why it's kind of like, okay, girl, you know, but I just, I don't know, Malaysia, it's for me, it just feels as though, like, she knew that she had, 
last two seasons, Malaysia knew that wasn't nobody fucking with her, so now she want to come on this season to be the victim. Like, that's how it comes across to me. But like I said, both Brandy and Malaysia should be handling their relationships in a different manner. So the next scene is Brooke, Brandy, British, and Duffy. They talk about the dinner guest list and how everybody's going to be there. And then, you know, Brandy says that she loves Malaysia. You know what I mean? Like, Brandy loves Malaysia. And even in that situation, she was still defending Malaysia. And I think that that's crazy because Malaysia just set her ass up here and said that she don't give a fuck about this friendship. She don't give a fuck about changing nothing about it. And you still got her back. You still got her back. Even though she ain't got yours, you still got her back. I know how that feels. I definitely know how that feels. Because, you know, when I was friends with another YouTuber, and y'all know who he is, uh, when I was friends with another YouTuber, I was hurt by that friendship ending, too. And it took me a long time to get over it. Like, I had my moments of sadness. I had my moments of anger. I had my moments of hatred. And I got to a place to where it's like, okay, girl, like, we're, like, you're doing great things. Like, you're an inspiration to me, even though I don't fuck with you. You're like, you're an inspiration to me. Like, you're doing big things, great things, things that I aspire to do and things that I'm finally going after. Because if you look at it, we were once in this together. So it's kind of like just watching you go after the things you said you would. It makes me want to do the same. So you are an inspiration to me, regardless of how I feel about you. You are an inspiration to me. You know, so it is what it is. So it's like, okay, cool. We we in this bitch. So it's kind of like, girl, we in this bitch. You know what I'm saying? Like, we in here. Period. And I even, you know, I used to defend him too, you know? Like, when people, even now, like, I don't want nobody to bash him. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want nobody to come, on, come on in my platform saying some bullshit about him. You know, I don't want nobody dragging him. Like, I don't want none of that. Because at, at one point in time, that was my brother. You know what I mean? Like, that was my brother at one point. So, you know, I just, I just, I just want people to win. Like, that's it. I want folks to win, regardless of whether I fuck with them or not. I want them to win. And that's just how I feel. You know what I mean? So, just seeing Brandy defend her just goes to show you. Who cared for who more than other? And then, you know, Duffy starts discussing her issues with Iman. <clears throat> and then um, she's just basically saying how he wants her to um, to not, to give up DJ, but she doesn't feel like she needs to. And then we get into um, British and Duffy. They discuss Brandy and Malaysia's um, breakup. And, um, you know, Duffy was looking like a child in this situation. I'm just going to be 100% honest with you. Brandy was, I mean, Duffy was looking like a child because she let it be known in so many words that she don't want them to be friends. You know what I mean? Like, she don't want them to be friends. And I just felt as though um, she, she, she always had been jealous of, you know what I'm saying? She, she always felt like she would be, you know, she, I always felt like she would be jealous of Brandy and Malaysia's, um, you know, Brandy and Malaysia's relationship. Like, she will always be jealous of their friendship. And she feels like if she gets back with Malaysia, then she's not going to fuck with nobody. I just think that Duffy was doing too much in that particular regards. And I don't think that. I think that this is high schoolish and childish. I don't even know why you're so invested. It ain't got nothing to do with you no fucking way. Why do you even care? So, we get into Brooke's birthday dinner. And Brooke realizes that everybody's there but Malaysia. And then Brandy starts defending Malaysia once again. You know, she was like, maybe she got something going on. You know, steady making excuses for Malaysia while she's not around. And then Angel gets a phone call from Rockstar. She hangs up in his face and she decides to take off. So she leaves before the dinner even gets started, honey. Then Duffy starts irritating Brandy with the whole... Um, that's my best friend. That's my best friend. Don't say nothing about her ex best friend. Don't no, being passive aggressive as fuck, right? So Brandy was like, okay, I'm getting annoyed by Duffy. So she goes and then she checks Duffy. And then um she basically lets her know, stop doing that. You're doing too much. And then you know, she's like, I'm just telling you, stop defending her. Like she don't give a fuck about you, which she don't give a fuck about her. There ain't no lie now. She don't really care about Brandy at all. She pretty pretty much said that. In so many words that she don't really give a fuck about her. So she, she ain't lying about that. 
But it's just the way you do it. And, you know, I'm glad that they were able to come to the conclusion that they came to. And they was able to hug it out and go on back in the room. So after that, the, the dinner was over with. Jackie checked on Malaysia. Malaysia went to go get her cheer on. And they on their way back to L.A. So Duffy and um, her friends are talking about her struggle with DJ thing. And I'm like, you're going to drag this DJ storyline the entire fucking time, huh? You're going to drag the fuck out this storyline. But okay, you need everybody needs something to do. Okay, girl. So French Montana, they call French Montana on the have a conversation. And of course, French don't want her to leave, you know. But French basically say, you got to do what's best for you. And that's really what it is. And sometimes what's best for you may not align with what your husband thinks is best for you. Do what's best for you. If you feel like DJing is what you want, do that. Girl, like, don't let nobody stop you, not even your fucking husband. That's how I feel about it. So then Angel and Duffy, Duffy vents to her about her issues with the DJing once again. And then Angel talks to Duffy about her relationship issues. And I think that there's more that's going to come out on the next episode because, you know, they get they get into arguments. You know, she feels like they need some space right about now. And then, you know, it's really not a good time to be dealing with all the stress and the drama while she's pregnant with the baby. And that's really the worst time to um be in a relationship with somebody and having some issues with people. You know what I mean? So that's how I feel. Like. I just, I just, like, listen, like, for real. Like, I want to know what's going on. Because Rockstar ain't working. He really not. Like, mm -mm, he ain't working at all, honey. Like, you can go find somebody else, child. For real, for real. And that's, that's kind of coming from me because I didn't even like Angel Brinks at all. Like, I was never a fan. I didn't even want her coming back this season. But her storyline has got me interesting, child. But with that being said, y'all, that was my review of Basketball Wives, okay? Be sure to like, rate, comment, and subscribe to my channel, y'all. And also click on the notification bell so you can be notified whenever a video drops. And also, if y'all want to follow me on any form of media, my Twitter, IG, and my brand new video will be in the description down below. Now, before we go, let me let y'all know once whether you like it or not, Reality TV panel will be on Really B's channel tonight, okay? It's at 9 15, 8 15. Central Time. That's 9, 15, 8, 15 Central Time. If you need the link, the link is already on my community wall. So go over there and set your reminders on that. And then tomorrow will be Roast and Review, okay? Roast and Review. Me, Terrence, and Josiah are going to come together and Roast and Review Love and Marriage Chunsville. And it will be right here on my channel tomorrow night, okay? So be on the lookout for that, all right? And with that being said, you guys, your boy is out of here. Until my next video, I will talk to you guys later. And yes, you will see my face on the panel, okay? <laughs> you will see my face on the panel. But with that being said, you guys, I'm out of here. Until the next one, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.